Peace, family. Peace to the family. I seen King Simon in the chat. Shout out to King Simon. Man, welcome back, Billy. All right, man. Hey, it's been a second, but we back. B billionaire Billy in the building. Hey, let's right. go. Talking man. To Richie Rich. Billy, man, tonight's topic, I'm going to tell you, they all over TikTok and yeah. Instagram talking about the Giants. Like, people mm -hmm. are so interested in this topic right now. So yeah. I'm like, yo, I got to do a show on it. And as soon as I had that thought, the next day I seen a video you posted on Instagram talking mm -hmm. about the Giants in America. <laughs> said, Boom. I said, there it is. I got to I gotta call my brother Billy and we got to get it going. So yeah, um, we, we're going to have a wonderful show tonight, family. I want all of y'all to tell your family, tell your loved ones, tell your friends that we are live. We're talking about something in porn. We're talking about history. We're talking about something that'll change the way you think about the think and view the world. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be an important show tonight, family. Um, let me get to some ads, and then we're going to get started, family. Shout out to everybody in the building. I see all of y'all. Band Productions, Vance Simpson, Jeremy Narr, Omega Red, Lisa Honeycutt, Bisa. All right. Shout out to everybody in the building. I appreciate y'all waiting for us, you know. But let's get it started, family. I'll be right back in a second, family. Uh, first and foremost, family, I want to give a shout out to my brother King Simon, one of the best when it comes to numerology. Text him your full name, date of birth, 347-496-1022. The brother also has a course on Udemy.com. If you are interested, go to the website, Udemy.com. He has an introductory course on there that is very helpful for anybody. Uh, also, family, I got in a magnificent website that is now up. All the past workshops that I have done is on there. We're going to have physical products soon on there. It's going to be on and popping. Get real familiar with Black Magic University. All right, family? And with that being said, uh, I guess we could get started with today's show. Uh, let me see. Make sure y'all are right in there. All right. Looks like y'all are right in there. So let's get started, uh, my yeah. brother Billy. Um, yeah, man. Like I said, wow, such a talked about subject on social media right now. Right. Um, They're going crazy talking about all the skeletal remains that, that have been found or is being found in Antarctica. Yo, we might have to do a show about Antarctica because I yeah. keep hearing things about Antarctica, about the ice walls and the giants yeah. and this and that. Yo, that's going that'll be a good show in the future. But oh, yeah, um, just all over the world, people are talking mm -hmm. about the giants, religion. We all we heard about whether it's the Quran, whether it's the Bible, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's more the esoteric text. We're always hearing about the giants, Billy, to start out. What can you tell me? I, you know, the, the most recent thing I heard, let me just say like this to end mm -hmm. before you start talking. Yeah. The most recent thing I heard was that the reason why the U.S. left Afghanistan, because they ran into some giants over there that, that ran their ass out. So right. I'm always hearing things about giants. I'm like, yo, what's up with these giants? Yeah, Billy, what's going on? What's go yeah, what's going on with these giants, Billy? Talk no, these us, giants, man. man, they've been around for a very, very long time. We're talking about deep antiquity, far beyond you know, uh, the religious texts that people know them as the Nephilim. We go deep, deep antiquity. You go back into the uh, ancient Indian Vedas mm -hmm. and you go into the ancient pre-dynastic text of the ancient Egyptians when they were called the Kemetic people, the people mm -hmm. of Kem. Mm -hmm. uh, they're talked about cuneiform tablets, the Akkadian and Babylonian cuneiform tablets. We're talking about super massive people. One of the most famous giants of all is not not David and Goliath inside the Bible. I mean, Goliath wasn't even that big compared to some of these other people. Mm -hmm. Is the Epic of Gilgamesh. Okay. And Gilgamesh is the full story of Noah. Uh, that is, you know, the Bible took a snippet, I mean, a tiny snippet of that story. But Gilgamesh was so big, he would hold a lion in one arm. He would pick up a lion and had it, held it, hold it up in one arm. He was a super massive man, super massive. And he wasn't because he had a pituitary gland issue or nothing like that. He was just one of these super massive giants. He eventually became a king. And even in one account, he actually left this planet to go try to, to, um, uh, to visit the world, the home world of his father uh, and was denied. Citizenship. Which was, what was his father's homeland? His father was uh, Enki. Okay. 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 So he was, a, he was a, what they call a demigod, half human, half uh, half Anunnaki or half Atlantean, depending on your version of how you like to see it. Mm -hmm. um, and according to this 
this is a world famous tab, but the Epic of Gilgamesh is taught in universities. OK, when you mm -hmm. when you learn ancient history, ancient civilizations, when I studied ancient civilizations with Harvard University, which is one of my certificates that I have, I have a certificate, a certificate in ancient civilizations from Harvard. Also, it's one of the biggest topics there. You have to write an essay on the Epic of Gilgamesh. OK. Mm -hmm. And so this was a massive dude. You know, if you go into more modern times, there was a, an account of the Anunnaki in the modern day Bible, King James Bible in mm -hmm. Numbers 13, 33, mm -hmm. chapter 13, verse 33. Mm -hmm. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak. Those are the Anunnaki. Mm -hmm. The sons of Anak were, um, you know, uh, these half human, half Anunnaki people. Who who uh, says uh, the sons of Anak who come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. They were like looking at themselves like, damn, these guys are massive. We look like grasshoppers to them, and to the, and, and to us, we look like grasshoppers, and to them, we look like grasshoppers. Like we're tiny, we're puny. Mm. And so this the account of these massive, supermassive beings has made it all around the world. No matter what text you pick up. Mm -hmm. and I've got them all here in my house. I got the Maya, the Incas, the Aztecs, mm -hmm. the Babylonians, the Hittites, the Egyptians, the Persians, uh, the Mahabharata, the Vedas. I got all these texts from all around the world. I've got the Egyptian Book of the Dead. There's, when you go to Egypt, whoever who, some, I'm pretty sure some of the people on this live are going to be coming to Egypt with me uh, in October because we sold one full bus out. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to be looking at depictions of giants in ancient hieroglyphs in Egypt mm. where you see these super massive people and you can tell that they're giants because the other people that are attending to them the the their slaves or their you know their their workers they're like not even a third of the height you know what I'm saying not even a third so it's pretty interesting so these giants man they're everywhere and it's um it's incredible that when I went to uh Colorado this was about maybe five years ago now. I went to Colorado and I took a helicopter. There's pictures of me on my account, on uh, my Billy Carson official account. I think there might be a one or two on this, uh, on my Forbidden Knowledge Instagram account as well. We landed in the Grand Canyon. And I specifically wanted to go to the area where I heard there were bones of giants and ancient Egyptian artifacts like carved into the, into the uh, stone. And that area was roped off. And it had military control over there. And I said to the guy, like, what is the big deal? Like, this is Native American land. Why can't we come in here? And the guy said that this land is owned and secured by NASA. Exact words. You know, and that wasn't the first time I ran into a NASA situation, um, you know, and going to ancient sites. That was actually the second time. So it's pretty interesting, man. They're trying to cover this up. The Smithsonian Institute one of the largest institutes for ancient history as we know it, but it's really his story because they give you a whole bunch of garbage. They keep the narrative going, but they openly admitted about four and a half, five years ago, look it up, that they had thrown away bones of giants that were discovered in the Americas. They took them and dumped them in the Atlantic Ocean. You know, so it's just crazy, man. It's crazy. The evidence of these people are here. The text tells us about it. There's depictions of them all around the world, etched into stone, etched into uh, temples, and as well as uh, ancient tablets. They're, they're, they're described very well. These beings, the majority of them, were not from this planet according to the text. Not according to Billy Carson. According to these texts, these massive people came from somewhere else and then came and came to this planet. And then they also had made it with some humans uh, or you know, homo sapien because we're all human uh, and then they gave birth to the Nephilim which were also another brand of giants now these giants were not as a lot of them had defects and issues and anger anger problems um, you, you know there were you know some of them had one eye they found these giant skeletons uh, so the the Nephilim offspring some of them were intelligent and some of them really had some severe birth defects uh, probably some because of crossbreeding, but again, just evidence of this of these giants. And according to the Epic of Gilgamesh, and according to the Bible, after the Great Flood, and even according to the Emerald Tablets, which predates all those, 
not everybody died. It even says in the Bible that the you know not everyone died. Some of the Nephilim and some of the people who hid in caves had survived the, the deluge, as well as the uh, in the Emerald Tablets, you find that some of the people had survived and some of the giants had survived as well, who were able to, uh, you know, uh, hide at, out in the caves and so forth. And they come back out when the water receded. You know, so it's evidence out there, man. It's incredible. I'm sorry, I had mute on. How many floods do, were there that erased, that completely wiped out civilization? From, from That's, a good, That's a good question. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people are, are under the assumption that there was um, only one flood. Right. And there was right. more. There was more than one flood. And now we know this because we can look at the we can look at the geology of the earth and we can check out the rock strata mm -hmm. and we can actually see the different layers. And these different layers of strata actually tell us a history. Mm -hmm. And we can go get the ice core samples, which, which we've already done. Mm -hmm. And the ice core samples, we take this gigantic drill, you, you, you know, and you you, just, you send this core down, a mm. hollow core, and when you pull it out, you pull up all the ice. And every layer that comes up is like so many hundreds of years. Mm. And mm. then you take that ice and you slice it up and you take the same core from the geology mm. and you take that dirt and that mud and that rock and you take it out the same exact way mm. and you slice it up into pieces and then you analyze it in a laboratory. Mm. And we can get a lot of data from this. So we find that there was at least four floods that we know of, okay, going back hundreds of thousands of years up until what looks like the last one was maybe around 36,000 years ago, the massive one, which mm -hmm. ironically, how old are the Emerald Tablets? 36,000 years old, accordingly, according to the, to the people that backed this thing. So pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. The other thing is on the ice core data and the... Uh, and the strata data, you can look at it and see that uh, through through a scientific analysis, not only were there floods, but they can even detect all the global warming periods. Hmm. So global warming is not from cows farting and people using hair, uh, you know, uh, you know, hairspray cans and, and your gas, you know, your emissions from your car. Have human beings contributed to carbon dioxide? Yes. But the majority of this warming is now we see from actual geological evidence, it's a natural cycle that occurs around every 4,200 years. Okay. Mm. And, every, and this isn't even the warmest warming period. And it seems that every time we come out of this ice period into a warming period, that's when, you know, these giants seem to reappear mm. again. <laughs> it's pretty crazy stuff, man. Mm. Yeah. These giants, um, were they different races like we see races now, like Asian, Black, Caucasian, mm. European? Like how like how do they look exactly? Another good question. Mm. We have in in Egypt, you see in the hieroglyphs black uh giants. Mm. The clear as day, their skin tone, they're painted black. They're painted not black, black, but they're painted brown, like my arm and you like your skin and my skin color, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you see that they're they're um servants are painted brown as well so mm -hmm. they have brown servants but mm -hmm. they're these kings that are giants they're mm -hmm. actually very obviously brilliant and smart and intelligent because they're actually ruling and have people serving them you see in the sumerian culture in the akkadian and um uh and babylonian uh text and and still under scrolls you see giants as well and you see that you can't tell what skin tone they are. Some appear to have more African features. Some of these beings appear to have even African type hair. Some appear to be a little bit more um, Arabian you know, by, by feature. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you also see in other parts of the world depictions of the giants that they left behind. Some of them were these giant, according to them, even the native indigenous Native Americans, these giant, tall, white, red haired giants. There was even a very well-known account in the in the Americas of uh, the tribes battling against these tall, white, red-haired giants. So this giant thing that's happened on this planet, it wasn't just at one location. It was everywhere, and it was all different kind of colors and races. We have right there, just in those three accounts, we have uh, what looks like to, to some people, their description is white. 
-hmm. another description is black another description is more um olive you know what i'm saying so there's a mixture here right right what um so when, when we see something like uh the incredible hawk that's not far-fetched oh no nah, you know <laughs> i don't think it's far-fetched at all in terms of now of course they've added the thing where he's absorbing gamma rays and he's mm -hmm. and it's genetically modifying him in real time now obviously mm -hmm. that's science fiction mm -hmm. but these beings reportedly were that strong like they really were that strong some of these big massive blocks and things that got moved around they didn't need anti-gravity they can just pick them up and move <laughs> yeah you know now think about this let's look at the physics of a planet okay so in on this earth we grew up under this gravity net so it set a certain type level of um strength to our bones and our structure right as our, mm -hmm. our avatar body now if we were to travel to a planet or a moon that was smaller than earth the smaller it is the stronger we are mm -hmm. okay and the smaller it is the most likely the, the bigger we are to any inhabitants that would be on that planet. Now, the Anunnaki supposedly came from a planet that was four to six times larger than Earth, which would explain their giant size. If we go to Mars, for example, Mars is much smaller than Earth. We already know that based on Mars gravity, we would, uh, me and you today, without lifting any weights, would be able to pick up a small car. Mm. We, we would be able to dunk on a 15-foot basketball hoop. You mm. know what I'm saying? We would look like Superman up there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, just like the Anunnaki, when they came here and started mating, the first, uh, you know, the first, uh, I guess, generation would be strong still. But by the time that 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 sec that first generation made it again and had a second generation, they would become weaker and smaller. And by the third generation, weaker and smaller. By the fourth generation, weaker and smaller until it normalizes out. Mm -hmm. The same thing here as well. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so do you think one time on Earth, like right now, we're like, yo, do giants exist? Do you think one time the, the whole Earth was giants and they was like, yo, do these little humans exist? I seen a little <laughs> human. Was it like the opposite back then at one time, you think? We were the anomaly? Well, I think so. I mean, you know, they came here to to mine this planet for resources. And mm -hmm. just like we just like we're trying to do now. And I think that uh According to the tablets, they didn't mess with us for a while. There was about 250,000 years went by before they actually tinkered around with us. We were already here doing our thing, living in our small, non-technological civilizations before they decided to tinker with our DNA and put us mm -hmm. to work for them because they were going to go to war against each other, according to the tablets. Mm -hmm. And so they decided to genetically take us and modify us and turn us into worker bees for them. Uh, so they knew we were here, but they really didn't even, they saw us as animals, even though we were highly intelligent in terms of our consciousness, we just weren't into technology, right? Um, we were in sync with the planet, in sync with nature. Uh, we, we, we had bigger skulls. We know that because we found the skulls. We probably had larger pineal glands. I believe that our cousins, because that's what it would have been, because they're not, they weren't homo sapien, that our cousins were probably far more spiritually intelligent than us uh, and much stronger and after the tinkering of the uh, of the DNA by these people, where they 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 fuse chromosome number two together, they shorten our telomeres, and then they also disconnected a lot of our DNA, which now science calls junk DNA. All those are disconnected nodes, and all of that all that did was, and they also in, inserted a worship gene in human beings. We notice now it's real peer reviewed science. There's a worship gene inside of people. This is it can be turned on and it can, it can actually be turned off. They actually experimented with this in a laboratory. When they turn it off, you don't feel like you need to worship any outside source anymore. When they turn it back on, you're seeking out external confirmation. So they did this to us in order to masquerade as gods and put us to work, have us enslaved without knowing that we're slaves. Uh, you know, say so, you know, <laughs> that's what happened, man. So we were just to them in their sight, you know, we were just puny animals. Matter of fact, Enlil was quoted as saying in the tablets several times, the humans are making too much noise. Kill them off. Starve them. He would even spray, here's the first evidence of chemtrails in history in the text. He would spray this pestilence on their fields so that their food wouldn't grow and it would kill the food, kill the, kill the crops so that they would die of starvation. This guy was brutal. Matter of fact, when the flood was coming, they had a way to avoid this flood, but Enlil... Uh, didn't want to avoid it. 
he wanted to allow it to happen. They had the technology to shift this giant asteroid or whatever it was that was coming. But, uh, but he ordered, because he was the king, that it would not to allow it to strike and wipe everything out and start all over again. Um, and then it says that the uh, his 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 relatives, you know, in her sag and Enki and everybody, they they moaned and groaned and they cried and they watched their creation become, you know, destroyed from space. Mm. Crazy stuff, man. Mm. So was dinosaurs around at this time that the uh, giants yeah. were around? Good question. Some yeah, people, some were. people think the dinosaurs didn't exist. They were really dragons. Like I hear, I hear so much stuff. What's your thoughts on just dinosaurs yeah. even existing? And dinosaurs. You're talking to a person that's been on actual archaeological sites and have the photos of me on archaeological dig sites. Mm. Yeah, di- you know, a lot of the people that say these things, they haven't left their zip code. And, you mm. know, and I'm not trying to insult anybody, but you, you know, we got to start relying on on hearsay for all of our <laughs> information. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Before you, before people start talking about things, they shouldn't save up their money and buy t- airplane tickets and go to these sites and start digging in the ground. I spent hours, countless hours, digging in archaeological dig sites, countless hours using paintbrushes to scrape away stuff to see what's underneath. Dinosaurs are real. Matter of fact, the reason why dinosaur bones in in uh, museums have lead paint on them is to keep because because there's evidence that the bones are radioactive. They want to keep the radiation contained. Mm. Now, why are the bones radioactive on the majority of dinosaur bones that they find? Mm. It means that at some point, that one strike wasn't enough to kill all the dinosaurs, that one asteroid strike. But at some point, there was some type of a war on this planet, just like the text says. There were two, actually. That was nuclear. And this nuclear war, you can find that they they wiped out a lot of dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. And the evidence of this... Uh, nuclear war is in the bones with the hardened background noise level radiation that's in these dinosaurs' bones. So dinosaurs are real. Now, did dragons exist? It's possible, but there are all different types of levels of of bones that have been found. And we know for a fact, like when I went to Cambodia, there's evidence that human beings walked along with dinosaurs. Why? Because they etched stegosauruses into their temples while they were alive. With the mm. meat on their bones, not something they found on the ground that they had to they they knew what they looked like. And also they etched them into the pillars at uh, different sites around the world, like Gobekli Tepe and and other sites. Mm. And don't forget about the era where we had all the gigantic animals like the giant saber tooth, the gigantic sloths, mm. right? Sloths bigger than than black bears and brown bears or grizzly bears. We mm. had. um all you know, we had fifty foot snakes and all these super massive, gigantic animals, mega sharks, and all this that we found on the planet. And that era wasn't dinosaur; that was just the explosion of mammals, and they became supersized. So why in the world wouldn't some of the people even be supersized? Right, right, right. So if if giants existed today, where do you think they would most likely be, according to your, you know all your research you've done? Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. I, I don't think that a lot of them are uh, the ones from the the like the the fresh bloodline are walking around. I think uh-huh. that they have their offspring is here, and I think that every now and then, because we all have been genetically modified with their DNA, that you see remnants of that evidence of them here. You see a lot of NBA players. You see how super massive these guys are. Look at Shaquille O'Neal. You know, look at these guys. These guys are super massive people that are anatomically correct. In other words, they don't look like they're deformed or have any kind of birth defect. They're just naturally that big. You know, you look at uh, Yao Ming and these other people. These are super massive people, man. Look how these NBA players move up and down that court with all that agility, speed, you know, 36-inch vertical leap, and you're already damn near seven feet tall or better. Look at Kevin Durant. This is all evidence of Anunnaki DNA inside of our mm. body these are just remnants that pop up you hear some people who grow seven eight inches in one summer and, and things like this this is that remnant you know remnant zion, DNA. zion williamson did that he grew like had a had a growth spurt like in one summer yeah yeah exactly zion williamson is a good example you know scotty pippen mm. he grew like seven eight inches in one summer mm. you know and so look at these guys. I mean, the evidence of these beings, you know, is all around us, uh, literally. Some of these NFL players. Like there's one NFL player that has six fingers, right? Mm. You know, so the, a lot of the Anunnaki, they had six fingers. This is where 
uh, the <laughs> indigenous Native Americans, when you when you came up and you met somebody that you didn't recognize and they were big, they would go how and they would lift their hand up. Mm. And when I talked to the Native American elders, why they would do that was that like just a greeting thing? They were like, we want to see how many fingers you had because if you had six fingers, then we know you were related to the giants. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, it's 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 a lot, man. It's <laughs> the evidence of these people have been all over this planet. Yeah, and the biggest biggest evidence you can just look at NBA basketball game. You're gonna see a lot of evidence right there. Mm -hmm. And you see what color they are. Indeed. So um earlier you was talking about history and you said, you know, history is his story. Mm -hmm. Do you think mythology gives us more of the truth of who we were than history, but than the history books? Mythology is far more accurate. <laughs> You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And they know this. Like, for example, you look at Thoth, right? Thoth, mm -hmm. uh, the Atlantean priest king. We know him, uh, you know, by his, you know, by his beak, right? You know, I see him on the front of my book. And obviously he didn't really have a beak, but that's just a symbolism, he, you know, of, of bringing darkness to light and knowledge and wisdom. However, if you go to uh, the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C., as soon as you walk up to the Library of Congress, those big giant steel doors, on one side of the door you have Thoth, and on the other side of the door you have his alter ego name, Odin. The both is the same person. One's got the beak, one doesn't have the beak. Two different eras, two different civilizations, same exact person at the doors that you open to walk into the Library of Congress. Okay. They know all this stuff, man. They're not, you know what I'm saying? They're hiding it all in plain sight. And uh, they're well aware of all of the myth mythology, what we're calling is Greek mythology and Egyptian mythology, you know, and the Egyptian gods and the Naturu. And they're trying to say that it was all, you know, uh, storylines. No, that stuff was real, man. According to the Egyptian people that that, you know, that really understand and know the ancient history. When you go there and you talk to the archaeologists and you talk to the actual real true homegrown historians and guides. It's the same thing that you learn in the Egyptian Book of the Dead. The Naturu came to Earth, and they turned mud into a kingdom. That mud, this is uh, this is antediluvial. Uh, this is after the flood. They literally went and moved their home base to the land of Cam and turned that place into a kingdom. They turned mud into a kingdom, and these people were giants. You know, if you go to the Temple of Edfu, they're etched into the outside of the Edfu Temple. Uh, so I can't wait to go there in. Uh, uh, in October, man, it's going to be an amazing trip. Yeah, my four family. Right. What do you think about the idea of the giants turning into stone and some of these colossal mountains we see used to be a giant that got turned into stone? Now, that's an interesting concept. I heard about that before. Yeah. I tend to more think that those are carved or terraformed mountains. If you go to Machu Picchu, all right, one of the one of the mountains there in Machu Picchu was completely terraformed into a face looking up into the sky. Mm. If you go to all over Peru, you'll see mountains that have been converted into gigantic faces. Uh, you'll see the same thing. Obviously, the megalithic uh, statues that have been carved in uh, in Egypt. And even the megalithic uh, mountains and hillsides carved in the faces in, uh, in, in Greece is where I've been. These are all the places that I've been. Same thing in Cambodia. Mm -hmm. So I think I don't know if these were real people that were turned into stone. I just think that um, people are always creating these works of art, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in honor of these or in remembrance of these gigantic people that were here. Mm -hmm. How how different was the uh, the atmosphere on Earth in this time as far as oxygen and everything? How different was it? Yeah, it's a great great question, man. But well, you got a lot of good ones tonight, Rich. <laughs> you did your research. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, this is an important show, Billy. It's an important show. Yeah. So right now, a lot of people think that we breathe in 100% oxygen. And that's not accurate because if you breathe in 100% oxygen, you pass out, right? Mm. So right now we have... Uh, we have on Earth right now about 21% oxygen. Mm. We have about 40% uh, uh, nitrogen. Mm. Then we have smaller percentages of like argon and krypton and helium. This is what we're breathing in. This is our atmospheric gases, right? Mm. We're not breathing in 100% oxygen. People think we breathe oxygen. That's actually not 100% accurate. We breathe in a whole combination of molecules that make up this soup that we're walking around in. Mm. And so uh, now 
when we do these core samples, right, from the ice and uh, from the rock strata, and we go back in time, we find out that there was more oxygen back then. So the oxygen levels were, uh, were way higher, you know, probably about another 10% higher than they are now, mm. which is incredible. Now, mm. I can understand it, too, because we had a lot more plant life. Mm -hmm. There was less uh, civilization in terms of what we call modern civilization, which now we have all these buildings and structures. That we've cut down the majority of the world's forests and stuff. Mm -hmm. And we also had these super massive trees back then, just like the animals were big. The trees, the trees were massive mm -hmm. and they produced a lot of oxygen man. they really cleaned up the carbon and produced a lot of oxygen. And so we had a situation where it was the right ingredients for larger animals who would need more oxygen to power bigger muscles. Because mm. the bigger you are, the mm. more oxygen it's you need in your blood to power those muscles. Right. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to move around that well. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Definitely. I want to take this time, family, to thank everybody for joining us. We just passed a half an hour mark. Thanks to everybody in the room. Uh, make sure you hit the like button, family. Very, very, very important. Hit the like button. I think so. I've got only about 400 likes in here, but I got 13 over 1300 people in here. So there should be much more likes. That's how we get the algorithm algorithm going. And that's how people discover this mm -hmm. show going on. And I know y'all appreciate this type of information that we uh my brother Billy is disseminating right now. So yeah, make sure you hit the like button, family. Also make sure you hit the uh hit up the cash app. Let me put it down and I'm leave, I'm gonna leave that running at the bottom. Hit up the cash app, dollar sign black magic. 363 and uh yeah let's continue with the show you know what i'm saying family mm -hmm. uh so billy man so i right, so we got these these giants remember you i think you showed the video of the uh the white dude that was talking about these tall black beings from saturn mm -hmm. are these the same beings that you think they come here these beings that he's seen over there do you think they those same beings used to be here in antiquity oh yeah i think these people have been coming here for probably potentially hundreds of thousands of years from Saturn, from Saturn. Well, from all over, from you know, all I over. don't think they're from this solar system. I think that they were, the rings of Saturn are important. If you were, if you had the capability of traveling through space and you had a lot of technology, mm. you would want to go to Saturn's rings, which this mm. guy was talking about the rings of Saturn that he called them the ring makers mm. because those rings are made of gigantic blocks of ice. Mm. And what is ice? Water. What is a commodity in space? Water. Mm -hmm. So if you have the capability of mining <laughs> water, then they could you you'd be a you know you could be rich just on that one commodity alone. It could be a well needed commodity for creating breakaway civilizations. But well, this is uh, this is now what we're saying now. What I'm saying right now is all hypothesis. I'm not saying these are facts. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. just hypothesizing that to me it makes sense that if you had that kind of technology that to come and go. That reason why a lot of these beings had claimed to go around Saturn a lot is because of the ice rings. Now, when you look into this ancient text, they came from other star systems. If you look at the, the text, you're talking about Eldebron, uh, Orion, Pleiades, um, Sirius, you know, all these different star systems that these uh, rec, uh, Zeta Reticulus. Mm -hmm. This is all in the text. Matter of fact, if you look at the shaft alignments of the Great Pyramid, right? Mm -hmm. So the Great Pyramid has shafts on the outside that lead to deep interior areas. And so these shafts, let me just type it in there right quick. Let me just look it up right quick. Pyramid shafts. I'll tell you mm -hmm. which stars they rely in. Okay. And uh, because these shafts align with Orion and other star systems as well. And uh, right, let's see here. Yeah, let's get them likes up, family. Come on, family. Let's get them likes up, family. So one shaft aligns with Orion's belt, which is a star system. One shaft aligns with Sirius, A, mm -hmm. B, and C. Mm -hmm. Another shaft aligns with Ursa Minor. And another one aligns with uh, Alpha Draconis, where they say the reptilians come from. Mm. So now, what is the purpose of these shaft alignments with the Great Pyramid? I'll tell you what my hypothesis is, okay? Mm -hmm. These beings that built the Great Pyramid, it was, it was built as a multifunctional stone computer. Uh, one account of the, of the Great Pyramid, one use, I should say, is for wireless power generation. 
We know that the Great Pyramid was built on top of an aquifer, which is now dried up. And even I've been underneath there. Those are dry tubes now where the water used to flow from the Nile. Mm -hmm. That water used to flow directly underneath the magnetized granite. And moving water under, under magnetized granite creates something called physiostatic electricity. And then it pushes the ions up into the pyramid structure where resonating rods would amp up the, the, the wattage, so to speak, as it went into the king's chamber. And then inside the king's chamber, something amazing would happen, which would boost the power even further and send it up through the apex. And it would be wireless, wireless power that could be captured by the jets that the Egyptians had all around. And they would use it for gold plating, light bulbs, and everything else. Mm -hmm. Now, there's another section in the Great Pyramid called the Queen's Chamber. It's actually down below and in a corner. Mm -hmm. Water would, well, from why I see how I see how it was designed, water had the capability of flowing up and being directed into that Queen's Chamber, which is this granite box area, which you could see that something used to be in there technological has <laughs> been removed. I believe that that was a... Uh, electrolysis for extracting hydrogen atoms out of water. You can extract the hydrogen from the H2O. And if you look at research into um, technology that we use right now to try to communicate to other beings in space, we try to, we try to see if anybody can hear us. We transmit our, our frequency on the, we transmit, transmit our, our information, I'm sorry, on the hydrogen frequency. Mm -hmm. Because we believe as scientists that that's the most widest known frequency in in the universe that any being, if you have any level of intelligence, that's the frequency you'd look for intelligence on. The hydrogen frequency. Hydrogen frequency. Okay. okay. So now I'm looking at this great pyramid and I see that this queen's chamber, it seems like it's, it would be set up perfectly to extract the hydrogen from the water and then... It would through the process of its the way it's set up, it would shoot those beams through those shafts that open up on the side of the pyramid towards those star systems on certain times of the alignment. Mm -hmm. I believe that they were communicating with those star systems, sending encoded messages because you can on the hydrogen frequency, you can embed uh, your message and you could transmit your message just like with a cell phone. What do we do? We use a microwave frequency, and what we do is we encode our message on the beam of microwave and we shoot it across to a tower that tower shoots it up into a satellite and it shoots back down to another region wherever that person is located the tower closest to them and then it ride that message rides that microwave beam directly to their device and then you dec and the device decodes it and then you get the information so it's the same exact way i believe they were doing the same exact thing utilizing the pyramid as a communications device to other star systems and that's why those shafts are there and why they connect to the queen's chamber you know, they we say as above, so below, as within, so without. Mm -hmm. And if the Bible and a lot of these ancient books deal dealt with physiology, like um, the all seeing eye, you can see that in the brain, like the all seeing mm -hmm. eye. What would you're talking about these shafts and you were talking about the piezoelectricity? I know the, the pineal gland is, uh, has piezoelectricity in it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. so what would the king's chamber and the queen's chamber what would that be in our body what aspect of our being is the king's chamber and the queen's chamber inside our body to help us better understand who we are yeah well the queen's chamber would be the, cere the cerebellum back cerebellum. here cerebellum and then you have the frontal lobe would be the king's chamber mm. okay mm. so you, the cerebellum is going to control things like memory coordination and so forth mm. but the frontal mm -hmm. lobe especially the neocortex like neo in the matrix mm -hmm. This is going to control spatial awareness, higher reasoning, consciousness, and all those kind of things right there. So all that's going to be up here. And then, you know, all of that's enclosed within uh, the frontal lobe. And the more powerful your frontal lobe is, the more energy you have moving through the frontal lobe, the higher levels of thought that you can actually get to, the more you can process, even the more you can multitask. Mm -hmm. And I just know this because I just had a brain, a SPECT scan. And so I just went through this whole spec scan. I had the number one psychologist in the world scan my brain and read my brain. And so I just found out about all this just recently, actually. That's on your show, um, on your on your network? You got that? Yeah. On your... It's on Good Knowledge TV, Scan My Brain. Yeah, pretty interesting. You got to oh. check it out. Yeah, got to check. For, Forbidden Knowledge TV, that's how they find it, right? Yeah, Forbidden Knowledge TV, yep. Yeah, definitely. Shout out to Forbidden Knowledge TV family. Billy got, I mean, he got some amazing shows and programs on there that y'all definitely uh, need to check out. Definitely yeah. need to check out. 
Appreciate uh, it. Th- these Giants, getting back to these Giants, would you say these Giants, uh, 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 were they, would you say they were like, um, well, first of all, somebody asked earlier, let me ask this. Somebody said if they were so big, how did they mate with, uh, with humans if they're so big? Good question. Yeah. If you look at some of the accounts, even in the biblical text, the women died. Wow. <laughs> That's one answer. <laughs> it wasn't too good for the women. Uh, in a lot of cases, they didn't live. You know what I'm saying? So that was a that was a big problem. Now, obviously, we know women can handle, they can have, they can give birth, they can have a whole dog on baby come out. So they have the capability of stretching pretty far, but it was in some accounts very painful. Mm. And in some accounts, the women did die. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Let's get to, uh, I want to get a couple of questions in here, uh, family. So give me some questions. Let's get to a Q&A. We're talking about the ancient giants who once roamed the earth. So give me some uh, good questions on these ancient giants, family. All right. Let me see what y'all talking about. I the- got a couple of slides for you too. Ray. Oh, yeah. Show, yeah, I forgot about the year. Show me the slides. Yeah. Then we'll get to the Q&A. Show, show me the slides. Uh, Billy. Okay, cool. Let me, uh, let me uh, share my screen. <clears throat> and go to that window with the slides in it okay and let me uh it's from the current slide so this is can you see this yeah yeah okay this is gilgamesh right this is a famous inscription he's it's, it's carved into a lot of different places this is um uh, the Epic of Gilgamesh on the other side, which is the actual cuneiform tablets that make up the full epic, which is a massive tome of information. It's the full story of uh, of, of, of Noah's Ark. Now, he's not Noah. He goes to meet, meet Zazudra, who's actually Noah in the Bible. And uh, he goes on a quest to search for this guy. Uh, he goes for a quest. And what's interesting about this story, Rich, it's going to blow you away. Enlil sends him on this mission, okay? That's Enki's brother. These are Anunnaki people. Mm -hmm. And he sends him on this mission, and he wants a companion to go with him because he's going to be lonely. Mm -hmm. So they fashion him a companion. In other words, they make him a companion to go along with him. It's a guy. uh, But the guy, when you you analyze how he moves, how he talks and everything, you realize that this is an artificial being. It's like a cyborg or a R2D2 type thing or whatever. You know mm. what I'm saying? Right. This is crazy. Like they they made him somebody to go to keep him company, an artificially intelligent being to go keep him company. The wild stuff. Um, pretty interesting stuff. But this guy was massive. You can see this lion in his arms. Mm. Yeah, look at that. Did, yeah, look at that, that lion. Wow. Yeah. Now the guy was super massive. He would get into battles and brawls and fights along the way. Nobody could nobody could touch this guy. This guy was massive. Uh, here goes an Egyptian god king. You can see how big he is. Look at the people. Yeah. He has a whole, what do you have, about four or five people there. With, you know, he's holding their braids in his hand and he's got the hammer. He's like, look, you guys are going to bow to me, do what I tell you to do. All right. That's in Egypt. That's actually at the, this image right here. Let me see. This one here um, is from. Abu Simbel, Temple Abu Simbel. So if you travel to Abu Simbel, which I'll be going to again in October, I will show everyone who comes with me this depiction right here of this giant. Now, this is, you know, you have Pharaoh Akhenaten, and he had a big skull, but this is his daughter, okay? This is just one of his daughters. All of his daughters had Mm -hmm. skulls like this. Uh, And this was the actual shape of their skulls. Now, these skulls, are not from skull binding. They're like this because they actually grew like this. They have more brain mass than a normal human being. Mm-hmm. Akhenaten had more brain mass than a normal human being. So did his wife, and so did his son, King Tut, um, which is this is crazy stuff. Now, if you look at even uh, King Tut's grandfather, Tutmos III, and his, and, and his grandmother, Queen Tai, they also had big heads as well. So this is pretty interesting stuff. Now, uh, King Tutmos and Queen Tai, they were black Africans. In other words, they were me and your color, exactly. And, and she had a huge afro. Um, you know, Tut was black. Uh, you know, and, but it's just really amazing that they were, they had these heads. They had these these incredible size heads. His, his sisters had these incredible size heads as well. 
Pretty interesting stuff. This is that verse that I told you from the Bible. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, who come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. You know I'm saying? They're saying, man, we were like nothing to these people. We were tiny. This is my own collection right here. You're looking at my credenza. And to prove it, I have a picture of me and my son inside the credenza so I don't get the crazy people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, you got you to gotta outsmart these clowns sometimes. Mm -hmm. So you see a picture of me inside my credenza with my son right there. Uh, but on the left, you see a giant paraca skull. And on the right, you see a human skull. This is not from skull binding, okay? It says here, this is my collection at home. You can clearly see that the paraca skull has almost one-third more brain volume and a much larger jawbone than the modern human. These were giants. You cannot get more brain volume from skull binding, as some would believe. If you skull bind, which did happen in the past, you actually shrink your brain for, uh, capacity, or uh, you know the, the skull. So you, your brain actually shrinks into the into the size of the skull. It doesn't expand. Binding makes it smaller, not wider. Now these people who are binding were trying to mimic the gods, people who they thought were gods, mm -hmm. because they were like gods with these big heads and all this knowledge, but binding just was a symbolism the people who had the skull like you see right here these are some giants with super super smarts and high technology um you know so it's pretty incredible now approximately three thousand years old this skull and then initial dna analysis of them has revealed that they may have not come from humans but from a completely new species according to paracas museum assistant director and researcher brian forster who i'm going to see him in peru in april on a tour that i'm doing down there good friend of mine it's apparent he said here's the apparent quote from the geneticist who who did the testing and then it goes on in my my, my report there but uh, it's actually on my on my uh, anoronic history group but what he was saying was they spent a couple hundred thousand dollars on this dna testing from multiple sources and the evidence came back non-human okay so pretty interesting stuff now we have we have thousands of these skulls now thousands okay not not a few not a hundred not a couple of anomalies thousands of these giant skulls and they're in wow. a museum and i'll be going live from the museum in april uh i'm sorry june june in june not april june from peru okay mm. with brian forster <clears throat> here goes the heights and some of the feats that have been uh stated by witnesses over thousands of years present day modern human which reaches an average height of about six feet tall then you have b 15-foot human skeleton found in the southeast Turkey in the late 1950s in the Euphrates Valley during road construction. Mm. Many tombs containing giants were uncovered there. That's, you know, close to the Middle East. Mm. Then you have C, Maximus Thrax, Caesar of Rome, 235 to 238 AD. Okay, look at that. Look how big he was. D is Goliath, about nine feet. Okay, yes, in Samuel 714, late 11th century. Then you have E, King Og, spoken of in Deuteronomy 311, whose iron bedstead was approximately 14 feet by 16 feet wide. Uh, King Og was about 12 feet tall. Then you have the FA, you have number, uh, what's this? Uh, who's this? 196, 19 feet, 6 inches. A human skeleton found in 1577 AD under an overturned oak tree in the canton of Lucerne. And you have uh, G, oh, you can't probably see the letters on your screen. I don't know if you can see them at the bottom there. But 23-foot-tall skeleton found in 1456 AD beside a river in Valence, France. You have uh, this other one here, H, which is uh, 25 or so feet, 6 inches, I believe. Skeleton found in 1613 AD near the castle of Chatmont in French, France. And this was claimed to be nearly a complete find. In other words, they had all the parts of that body in H. And uh, I, almost beyond comprehension or believability, was the find of two separate 36-foot human remains uncovered by the Carthagens somewhere between 200 to 600 BC. And so this is just some accounts of, uh, of giants that have been found you know, around the world and their sizes. So we know that these people got super massive at one point or be or were super massive and then shrunk really is what it seems like mm -hmm. 
there's one more here in Egypt. This is uh, one of the Egyptian temples. You can see the this king and this pharaoh. And you can see the human beings coming to worship and serve. You can see how the size they are compared to the size of this this guy. <laughs> this guy is massive. Huge, yeah. Yeah. Mm. If he stands up, I mean, these people are below his kneecap. Mm. This is, again, Gilgamesh. You know, so you can see the average height of a human versus the average height of this guy. And in the upper right corner, you see an Anunnaki Sumerian cylinder scroll depicting the size of one of these Anunnaki people. He's actually teaching these human beings anti-gravity techniques with this apparatus. That disc you see there, that round disc with those lines on it, mm -hmm. that's not a disc with lines on it. That's a frequency. Uh, it's a cymatic frequency, a particular frequency that you can get when you put sand on a plate and put a speaker beneath it. Once you obtain that right frequency, you can make that exact pattern. You can see the table, the guy, the human being that has his hand on the on the uh, leg of the table, he's lifting it from that side with one arm, a stone table. And this is the same as that apparatus at the um, at the uh, Coral Castle in Miami, Florida, in Coral Gables. It's the same exact setup with this type of a tripod the guy has. He had a magnetic thing at the top and he had this frequency coming out of it that would help him levitate gigantic coral blocks. The guy was only a four foot 11. He weighed 100, 110 pounds or something. His name was Edward Leedskillen and he claimed to have unlocked the mystery of building pyramids just like the ancient Egyptians and he built this megalithic, this is in modern times, he built this megalithic structure in Miami called the Coral Castle, a place that people can go without having to use a passport and go explore a megalithic site. So that's what I have for you today. Let me stop sharing my screen. Mm. So um, these giants were, I, I see people commenting on, uh, are they, were they woman giants? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. It, oh. Yeah. So they were just as big as the male giants, the woman. Yeah. Yeah. You had in her sack, which was Enki and Lil's uh, sister. You had several other cohorts of them that they had that came here. These women were, you know, were, were, were huge. They didn't have a lot of women that came within that first band of Anunnaki that came to this planet. Mm -hmm. So they used to just intermate, intermate, interbreed with each other. They would even have sex with their sister and their mother. It's crazy mm -hmm. stuff going on. Some of these tablets read like, you know, soft porn. <laughs> it's crazy stuff. Wow. Yeah. Uh, somebody wants to know, shout out to Hot Dusty 3000 for the super chat donation. Uh, that individual wants to know, Billy, do larger heads with larger brains equal greater intelligence? If so, why? That's a good question. Now, we can only hypothesize that it may equal super more intelligence. OK, we know that as humans, mm. we only we only use a very small percentage of our brains. Mm. Uh, and we can only assume that even a larger brain that being may only use a certain percentage of their brain. We can only assume we can't, we can't know for sure. However, even if they're only using a smaller percentage, if we're using 10% and they're using 10%, but they have more brain mass, then their 10% is greater than our 10%. And by that method alone, they potentially, I'm not saying they are, but they potentially could have been a lot smarter. Okay. Uh, were giants hunted and killed? Oh, yeah. They were hunted and killed all over the place. Uh, there's a lot of accounts of the Iroquois, the Lakota, uh, Hopi uh, encountering giants and battling giants. They were doing this because the giants, they had got, in this particular case, some of them had gotten kind of unruly and were even attacking them and causing them problems. In some cases, they were just scared. And so they would go and try to kill these people. There was also a whole grave of hand, giant hands found. Uh, mm -hmm. And so there was a there was a bounty placed on how many giants you can kill. And if you brought back the hand of the giant, then you would get paid a bounty. So uh, giants were definitely hunted to, to extinction, the ones that were left behind. Yeah. OK, this is some interesting stuff, family. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, I see Hank posted. Let me get to Hank's question. Where is this at? Uh, Brother Rich, please ask Mr. Carson to talk about the present day giants in the Solomon Islands. What's going on with that? Yeah, there's some accounts of some giants in the Solomon Islands. The thing is, I haven't been able to get any solid, like rock solid intel on that. You know, them and the Kandahar giants. It's um, 
there's some imagery and things like that have been put out, but I can't verify the sources. So you know how I am, which I like to really make sure what I'm saying is backed by at least something. But mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. And it seems like these beings are still here and mm -hmm. still controlling some things from behind the scenes, even. You know, mm. um, but it's really interesting. Now they supposedly found some giants out there in the Middle East that they, you know, that they, they haven't even their bodies didn't even rot yet. But the only thing is, when you look at these these videos, they look really good in terms of the quality of you know uh, how how it was shot. However, you know, you know, you know, I mean, obviously we look at movies, and movies look phenomenal too. You know, what I'm saying we, they look real too. Yeah. So I just don't know. There's not enough evidence for me to really deeply comment or say and say that they're real or not but i do personally believe that there are these these ancient beings operating and pulling strings from behind the scenes on this planet i, I really do believe that they're in some way shape or form still um some of them a small amount of them are still controlling some outcomes here mm, interesting where do the pygmy people play in this story yeah, the pygmy man. There were pygmies everywhere. There was a whole island full of pygmies, uh, you know, down in uh, the South Pacific. They found these pygmy people, and these people were anatomically correct again, but they were just tiny people. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is when we look at some of the anomalies from Mars, some of them look like pygmies. They have the same anatomy and the same height and size that would be the same pygmies that were found here on Earth. And so we see that now the accounts of these pygmies. It was pretty interesting. Supposedly, they were seated here. They weren't from this planet. Okay. They weren't from this planet. This pygmies were seated here and the aboriginals were seated here. They were, this is from their history. This is not from me. This is what they say. Mm -hmm. Just, let me clarify that again. So I've sat with the aboriginal people. And if you don't believe it, look it up. Google the aboriginal history. They will tell you that they, according to their history and what they believe, they were brought here by Pleiadians. Pleiadians brought them to this planet and seated them on this planet. And according to them, Earth is an abandoned seed colony. Mm. Man, this stuff, wow. Yeah. I'm telling you, man. This <laughs> stuff, man, oh, man. So interesting. Yeah. Please ask about the Kandahar giant special forces encountered it during the war. Yeah, they were uh, supposedly... This Kandahar giant uh, wreaked havoc. There was a cave even that was uh, had some type of a force field in it. And some mm. soldiers apparently died from this uh, encounter with these Kandahar giants. Um, you know, again, it's not, we're not going to ever get to know, like, say, this is 1,000% fact. All mm. we can get is some hearsay about this situation and some, you know, some cr crazy images and video clips. But it seems as if there was something that was encountered there that drove them out of there, that region. And according to some accounts and according to some supposed veterans, that ex-veterans at the time, again, I'm just saying supposed. I can't clarify this 1,000%. Mm -hmm. But they had encountered some giants there, you know, which is mm -hmm. pretty interesting. Uh, John Doe wants to know, how do I unlock my giant DNA through epigenetics? Well, you know, uh, that's pretty interesting. Now, through epigenetics, through epigenetics can be can be um, reprogrammed through affirmations and meditation. And that's what I learned at MIT. So epigenetics, they found that by doing uh, well, three things. One is that MIT is, is the um, is the meditation and affirmations. And then the third thing that they found in Russia, believe it or not, of all places is they can they can tune a specific frequency to your body and they can actually rewrite it from a frequency and re-encode DNA from frequencies. They've been doing that experiment for a very long time and it now became peer-reviewed science that they've actually been able to achieve it in multiple replications of the experiment. But if you just want to do it yourself, it's all about tapping into yourself. It's all about going into deep meditations. Uh, I think the best meditation for tapping into who you truly are and enlightening and, and opening up all the avenues of enlightenment inside of your body and to let the universe fill it up is going to be the OM meditation. OK, mm -hmm. and the OM meditation is the primordial sound. OM is the actual sound that emanates life into existence through the vesica piscis, which is part of the flower of life. 
Uh, so look up the own meditation and then look up positive affirmations and you can create your own list of affirmations that you want to basically speak out loud to yourself three to four times a day. Uh, you know, I am powerful. I am mighty. I'm intelligent. I'm great. All these kind of words, like the affirmation, you speak them out loud to yourself three to four times a day for 21 days. Scientifically proven. This is taught at MIT. <clears throat> your DNA will be rewritten. Excellent. Excellent. You know what I actually do sometimes, Billy? I meant to say this on the show I just had, but I had to end the show early. Um, with my affirmations, I um, make jingles out of them the same way McDonald's and these corporations have these jingles mm -hmm. and they're hypnotic and they get us and we're singing and walking down the street and we don't know why we're singing it. I yeah. will make a jingle out of something about wealth or something about health. And mm -hmm. it sticks with me more that way. And I'm yeah. incorporating because we're dealing with rhythm. So it's the law mm -hmm. of rhythm, law of vibration. But yeah. I find that, that that helps me out. That's like a hack, family. So mm -hmm. if you can make a jingle like your own jingle out of an affirmation, something you, you want to manifest, yeah. I think it'll stick more. You, you got to do, you got to learn from your enemy. If McDonald's got these yeah. jingles and it's working, make your own jingle. You That's know, what you do. listen, I made a song, Affirmations, right? Mm. That's my number one played song for the last three years, Affirmations by Forbidden Knowledge. It's on all streaming services. Dope. And I decided to make a song called Affirmations where I'm speaking all these affirmations for, for four, almost four minutes mm. over music, which you mem you memorize it. Mm -hmm. You start mm -hmm. walking around, like you say, singing it to yourself, speaking it to yourself. Mm -hmm. And by that method, driving to work, you can just turn it on. And now you're getting the affirmations. Yeah. And that way it makes it easier for somebody. Definitely, definitely. Let's get to uh, some more questions. Tito wants to know, where are the bones of these giant people? Where are the bones? Great, great question. There's uh, one set of bones. And uh, let me see if I can find the name of this. Um, let me go. Can you can I go back to share my screen real quick again? Yeah, yeah. Let me do that real quick. I, I forgot to show one thing here. Let me, mm -hmm. Which bones? I'm glad you brought that up. A couple of the slides were out of order, I guess. Uh, so here's some by speaking of bones here are some bones right here right these were shown at Bonham and Bailey circuses and stuff like that back in the day mm -hmm. and you can see how massive these people were wow yeah super massive mm. you can see the molars here we have teeth from these giants we have some teeth look mm -hmm. at on the left is a human molar and on the right is a giant's molar Mm. okay this is in peru you can see these terraces you can see how big these steps are <laughs> yeah and pretty pretty big you can see the people down, down there i've been on those terraces there's pictures of me standing there this is one of this is my picture but I, there's pictures of me standing on those terraces on my facebook page that's in peru you said yeah that's in peru yeah okay. yeah and then there's lots of uh according to the bones here goes New York Times, July 14th, 1916. Giant bones in mound. Remember I made that post talking about the bones in the mounds, mm -hmm. right, in America? Well, here goes mm -hmm. the New York Times, mm -hmm. 1916, verifying that they've dug up some of these mounds and found bones of what? Giants. Okay. What? Go, go back to that one. Mm -hmm. Let me. What is that? Let me see, sir. Mm -hmm. Scientists yeah. unearth relics of Indians who lived 700 years ago. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, they found these giant bones in there. I was trying to find this other one image of a, oh, maybe I didn't have it there. Hold on. Let me see. Let me stop sharing for one second and see if I can pull up one museum. There's one museum in America that has one giant bone in it. Yeah, you got me. I was I was reading that. You got this is interesting, oh, man. I'm sorry. Right, no, 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 don't put it back. No, I'm just saying I can, oh. I'll go back to it after the show. But yeah, wow. <laughs> yeah, there's so much. It's so much stuff, man. I got on all this stuff. I've been, you know, collecting this stuff for so many years, mm. man. It's just, it's just, it's just crazy. Well, you've been studying about these giants for quite some time now, huh? Oh man. Oh yeah, yeah. For a long, long time, man. Yeah. Long time. Um, here you go. Let me see. Okay. All right. Let me go back to share my screen again, mm -hmm. and then pull up uh, this other one here real quick. Okay. While you do that, family, make sure y'all hit up that cash app. Don't be cheap, family. Come on. All right, here we go. All right. All right. Uh, 
Let's see if we can slide show this and make it bigger. Okay, this is a 47 inch femur. In the late 1950s, during a road construction in Southeast Turkey, this is the one I talked to you about on that list of giants mm -hmm. in the Euphrates Valley. Now, where do you see the word Euphrates a lot? In the Bible, all right? Mm -hmm. But you see it a lot also in the Sumerian tablets. Uh, many tombs containing the remains of giants were uncovered. At two sites, the leg and bone of uh, were measured to be about 120 centimeters, 47.24 inches. This is Joe Taylor, director of the Mount Blanco Fossil Museum mm -hmm. in Crosby, Crosbyton, Texas. So this actually is in a museum, all right? This just giant theme right here. And you can see, based on how big it is, how big the person would be, okay? Mm -hmm. You can see where it fits into the hip socket. I mean, this is a big dude. Whoever this was was massive. We're talking super massive. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, there, there were just a lot of evidence of these giants out here, man. A lot mm -hmm. of evidence. There's footprints that have been, you know, cased in mud that have survived. There's handprints. People were huge. It's just another, you know, another example. Do you think uh, it'll come a time where giants rule the earth like how they used to? Um, you know, I don't think so. I don't think that era is going to come back right now. I think that uh, we're in the era of the Homo sapien. Mm -hmm. And our biggest enemy right now is ourself. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that once we figure out that, yeah, there are people out there and they're monitoring and watching us, maybe even trying to direct our civilization in a certain way for their own personal benefit. But we outnumber these people. Mm -hmm. And once we stop playing the game, their game, we could take back control of our own planet. And uh, it's just up to us when we decide to grow up and stop all this infighting and attacking you know right mm -hmm. now we got all this european white on white crime going on it's out of control right mm -hmm. you know we got in the inner cities we got the black on black crime and we got you know you know you're 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 a light black and you're a dark black and i don't like you in haiti and dominican i mean we gotta stop all this foolishness man it's just you know it's like come on man let's just work together to stop playing this game and oust these hundred people that are controlling and running everything from behind the scenes and take control of our planet, man, and turn this thing into a utopia, which we can do. Indeed, indeed. Um, I seen somebody, um, I can't find a question now, but somebody asked, what were the what was the giants' diet like? What did these giants eat? Did they eat trees? What did they eat? Unfortunately, mm -hmm. in some accounts, they ate people. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, ooh, there was a lot damn. of cannibalism going on, man. Damn. <laughs> Yeah, which is why some of them were hunted down because they were eating people. Yeah. Craziness. Yeah, man. Uh, craziness. All right, let me. Well, I didn't I ain't expect you to say that. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't expect that one. I thought he was going to say something completely different, family. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, they were, it was eating people. There was a lot of, not all of them, not, not all of them, but there was a lot of cannibalism going on. Now, the big ones like from Egypt, like the Natiru gods, right? Uh -huh. They didn't have to go hunt. They didn't have to go shopping for their groceries or nothing like that because they made the people bring them the stuff. They told the people, if you give us your first offering, this is where all these offerings come from in like the Bible and the mm. ancient Torah text. You have to give me your freshest, your, your first uh, harvest. Give me your fresh lambs, right? So these people would bring the lambs and bring the harvest to the temple. And they would line up for miles. You could you, When you go to Egypt, they'll tell you the same story. Mm. They, they thought they were going to get a blessing from the God you know, and it was just really, it was it was like free grocery shopping. You bring me the food. Then in the temples, you'll see when we go there, they have all these storehouses for all the donation of all wow. these, of all the food and the meat and everything, where they would hide it, or you know, hide it, but store it away. Because they weren't going to go out there and kill nothing and, and grow nothing. They were going to have the people bring it to them and give them a fake blessing and tell them to go back about their business. Yeah. Yeah. Hot Dusty sent me a super chat. He says, Billy did Thanos actually exist or was he just made up for the movies dados man. wow listen man i don't you know that's a good question i don't know if he existed or not but i tell you what i understand him <laughs> i'm not saying he's right but damn do i understand him boy because it's a it's a trip right here. if i had the if i had them stones right now i might wipe a few a few of these leaders out man so we can mm. do our thing <laughs> you mm. know what i'm saying i, I just I, i'm just saying i understand where he was coming from mm-hmm Definitely. Um, where was I just seen one? Was there? Oh no, you just answered that. You just answered that. Um, 
<laughs> Does being attracted to Amazon woman mean that I was a giant uh, in the past life? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, in these tablets, it's possible because let me tell you something. These these people, man, like Enki, all he keeps talking about is how beautiful these women were. All and Lil keeps talking about how beautiful these women were. And there was a war over over like the the EGG and the Anunnaki were going to war because the EGG would complain they didn't have no women. Mm -hmm. you know, they needed to take some of these Earth women with them back to Mars. Mm -hmm. This is in the this is in the uh, in the Atra Hasis epic and the Enuma Elish. Mm -hmm. They were fighting over these women out here, man. I mean, they you know they were saying how beautiful they were. In one account, I see how I can word this. He says that his phallus was watering when he saw the maiden on the riverside. Yeah, I mean these people were like <laughs> people were you, yeah, they were they were you wasn't, old, you wasn't lying about the soft porn when right. you made, damn bro. Wow, that, that's in the tablets. I mean, so you know, these people were uh yeah, they were horny toes, man. Mm. Somebody yeah. uh asks, was biblical god king what's that, Xerxes? Xerxes, yeah, a, a giant. giant. Yeah, Xerxes was a giant. Yes, he was. That's a good question. Yeah, Xerxes was definitely a giant. Um he was, um, oh man, what's that race over there? Um, it's called, uh, uh, that, it slips my mind at this exact moment, but. What, what Arabian or something? Or? It, not really Arabian, no, but um, more of an olive skinned person. But yeah, but I forget the exact name of the terminology for that era. But anyway, but he was a giant for sure, yes. But he was an anatomically, anatomically correct giant too. In other words, it wasn't a birth defect. This was a big dude, huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Persian. He was Persian. Persian. Okay. okay yeah. Persian. Persian. Okay. okay. Slip right. my mind for a second. Um. Somebody said, "Was Michael Jackson video? Remember the time trying to tell us something? Magic Johnson in a video. He was pretty tall. It's possible. You know, Michael Jackson was pretty slick on how he would." encode information into his songs and videos and um contrary to a lot of black people's belief he was really trying to help us in a lot of ways mm. he was you know he was he was going out on the edge risking making a video full of black people in egypt and black kings in egypt yeah at a time where it still wasn't even fully accepted yet you know mm. um and you know they don't care about us that song i mean this guy, man, whatever, no matter what you think about his, his, his you know, him as a person in terms of what he was doing with his body and whatever, and whatever they claim did or didn't happen with these kids. Um, Michael Jackson was really trying to help black people in any way that he possibly could in his in his own method, with his own method. You know what I'm saying? What's interesting about Michael Jackson is his face. The way he altered his face, a lot of people Look, don't realize. Looks like he, that Egyptian. Looks like that Egyptian statue. Exactly. Yeah. He was making his face into that Egyptian statue. Who was exactly that? Was who, who was that Egyptian statue? Do you have that picture? It was actually a female. Yeah. Um, and that female was. Um, let me see if I can pull it up real quick. He looks I mean, identical. Female. He looks identical to that uh, female. Yeah, and I think that that female name of that female may have been unknown. Um, let me just see if I can find it real quick. Yeah, that thing was crazy, man. Mm -hmm. When I first saw that about eight years ago, I was blown away. Then I mm -hmm. went and saw that statue head bust in person at the oh, yeah. Cairo Museum in 2014, and I was like, man, this is incredible. Damn. This is Mike, you know? How, how many times you been to Egypt, Billy? Uh, four times. Okay. Yeah, I'm going back again in October. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to spend another uh, couple of weeks there. Then I'm going to film a documentary there after my tour leaves. I'm doing a private tour with, with, with 70 people. When they, when they leave and go back home, mm -hmm. I'm going to um, uh, do a documentary called Living in the Shadow of the Pyramids. I'm going to be talking about what's happening to the people that's living there because Egypt looks like it looks like a bomb went off. And you know, and, and everything has been destroyed. It looks looks like Beirut happened every day. Mm. Damn, you know, and, the, and people are living in collapsing structures. And when it collapses and the people die, they don't even pull the bodies out. They just move into the collapsed buildings and put a, a sheet over the, you know, over the open windows. There's no glass in the windows. There's, some of these people have no doors. There's no running water, no toilets in a lot of these places. Um, 
they're making like, I don't know, 10 bucks a week. It's just craziness going on over there. There's no real estate market because there's no mor mortgage loans. So nobody has any reason to invest any money into any of the um, any of the, the building structure there and, re and rebuild because nobody can even get a loan to live in any of the, any of the stuff or buy it. You have to pay cash. Uh, so it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty tore down, man. It's pretty bad. You know? Yeah. I got a, a, a good one for the, um, with the Michael Jackson, the Egyptian statue. I'm about to put it up right now. Cool. Nice. Hold up. Let me show you this. This, this, wow. They did it side by side. This is a good one here. Let me see. You see that? Let me get this. Up yeah. There. Like, wow. Look yeah. at that, man. There you go. Damn. Even the way the nose is damaged. Every you know, everything, face. yeah. Everything, you know, the eyebrows. It's even the skin tone. It's all the same as this Egyptian bust, you know. And he was uh, mimicking this thing. In my opinion, I think this is what he was doing. Why? We have no idea. We'll never know. Mm -hmm. But to me, it's quite evident that he was turning himself into this, and this is not unheard of. A lot of people, if you Google people getting facelifts to turn themselves into different animals and stuff like that, you know, the, the people have split their tongues and give themselves lizard tongues and people have tried to turn themselves into frogs and all kind of other things. So mm -hmm. uh, it may be body dysmorphic, but whatever. It's um, it's a reason why he was doing this. And I think my I, my personal opinion, for whatever reason, it was to look like this statuette, which is at the Cairo Museum. Mm. Yeah. Well, uh, let's get to another question. Somebody says, Enoch says the giants were the sons of the fallen angels and they'll return after 70 generations. Yeah, they come wow. back every so many generations because that's the best time for their, their, their planet to, uh, to be within range for them to rendezvous with Earth. Mm. So when you're getting ready to travel to another planet, right? And so let's say... Um, I don't know that. Let me take my granddaughter's socks. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. all right. So this is planet X and this is Earth, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when planet X is way out here, it's a long ways to get there. But when planet X is coming around the sun and it gets to something called perihelion, all of a sudden it's a little closer. And now you can just leave your planet. So you leave your planet when, some, when a planet's orbiting, this, right? And it's coming into a certain range. You leave your planet early. So you would leave Earth as it's moving, as other planets are moving, and you'd rendezvous with it at a point that makes it as close as possible to you so you don't have to spend a whole lot of years in space because we don't have good technology for traveling in space. Even with good technology, it only makes sense that some of these trips back and forth would happen during rendezvous times to save exposure to space and save time and space. You don't want to be in space for two or three years. You'd rather only do it maybe for a few weeks or a few months. So uh, Enoch was, you know, referencing these people. He called them fallen angels. I call them fallen uh, aliens. And these people, in my opinion, had nothing to do with any kind of um, angelic beings whatsoever. That's my opinion. I don't want to offend anybody. It's my opinion. These were flesh and blood people because they drank. They got drunk. They had sex with men and women. They went to war. They had to go to war where they had to put on their actual battle suits and they had to have knives and swords and they taught humans how to make weapons and they taught humans how to kill people. And so that's why I say, that's why I say that these weren't anything to do with angelic beings and that the sons of God that fell from heaven to earth are the EGG who came down from Mars to attack and kill the God of heaven who was known in Sumerian tablets as Anu and his sons, Enki and Enlil. Uh, and the only way that battle was stopped was because they agreed to create slaves to do the work for them. So it's pretty crazy stuff. Mm. Ooh, wow. Oh, uh, let's get to the next question. Can is Planet X, y'all gotta work on your grammar. Is Planet X called Xylanthia? I think that's what he's trying to ask. Is Planet X called Xylanthia? No, well, I've never heard that name before. The only name I've ever heard is in the Enuma Elish. It's called uh, Nibiru. And in a newer version of the Enuma Elish, Marduk, uh, who's also in the modern day Bible in, in the Old Testament, and he's also in the Torah, he changes that tablet to say Marduk because he wanted to be the destroyer instead of it being Nibiru because Nibiru had a moon that crashed into Tiamat and caused Tiamat to explode, which was another planet, which is where Earth came from. We were a chunk of that 
planet that, that, that exploded on a collision. And then uh, the rest of that planet turned into the asteroid belt. So the asteroid belt is an exploded planet. But I've never heard that name, Zelanthia, before. Um, since we're talking about giants and pygmies, is there any evidence of fairies? They're also in mythology. There's a lot of fairies in mythology. I'm not going to lie. I mean, <laughs> they're in there for sure. And so it makes you want to ask the question, who were these beings? Because the way that they're referenced is that as if people really truthfully interacted with them, that they weren't figments of their imagination. Now, there was a very small, uh, uh, what do you call it, artifact of bones found that was fairy sized. That was about, I don't know, seven, eight years ago. Um, let me see if I can find it real quick. Very alien. Let's see if that pulls it up. Mm -hmm. um, bones. Pretty interesting stuff. They've, yeah, it was, um, it was on that, that movie that uh, came out that went viral. Um, it was at Smithsonian. It was on all these independent science magazines. Here we go. I found it. Let me save this and uh, <clears throat> and open it up. Uh, boom. Okay. I'm going to put it on my screen right quick. All right. This was interesting stuff. Um, so are the fairies real? I, I don't know. It's possible. When I saw this thing, I, I thought it might have been possible for sure. Let me try to. Where was that here? Uh, hold on a second. I got to get it up on my insert there you go okay now let me share my screen thanks to everybody in the chat family hit that like button we got 1800 people in here thanks for joining us tonight make sure you hit the like button please extremely important for the broadcast hope everybody's enjoying themselves let's put this on the screen okay uh, let me uh so this is it here and this made its round this thing is tiny it's only about uh two inches or three inches um it's had all kind of dna tests and everything else it's a uh, fully atomically correct according to uh the people you know a full-grown person and uh obviously it doesn't look like a human being it doesn't look like an embryo it's got a rib cage. It's got everything, and it's only a couple inches long. It was in a movie called Sirius or something like that. I think it was uh, Dr. Stephen Greer's movie, one of the very first ones he put out. And then a lot of science labs had analyzed the data on this from all around the world for a very long time. And it was so unbelievable that they didn't want to admit it, but it's it's a real thing. It's a real being. It's a real alien, in my opinion, or something that we – maybe it's from Earth, but we just don't know what the heck it is. But maybe this could be one of those fairies. You know, I don't know. Mm, quite interesting. Yeah. Uh, are pyramids over here older? Once again, the way y'all write, are, he's trying to say, are the pyramids in America older than Egypt? Okay, so that's a good question. Um, there are pyramids all over the earth, and some are older than the ones in Egypt. The ones on America, on the North Americas that are actually above ground that we can actually get to and access appear to be younger uh slightly younger than the ones in egypt not much younger but slightly younger like if you go to teotihuacan in mexico for example look at the teotihuacan complex which is an ident identical mirror of the giza plateau great pyramid and other two pyramids there um you'll find that uh it's younger but it has the same exact base the the, the pyramid of the sun has the same exact size base as the pyramid of the great pyramid in giza in egypt and it's exactly 50% the height of the Great Pyramid. So obviously, it's the same architect built that one out there. Uh, if you look at some of the pyramids that led up into the North Americas, you'll find that those are actually newer, uh, you know, and not as old as the ones in, in Africa. Um, but then if you look at there's a pyramid in Antarctica, that pyramid in, in Antarctica is super ancient. If you look at the ones that are off the, sh off the coast of Florida, off the coast of Florida, close to Cuba, underneath the ocean, they found a pyramid complex. And the big pyramid there underneath the ocean 
is way larger than the Great Pyramid at Giza and potentially much older because it's obviously in a sunken part of the, the, the earth. Uh, you know, so there's places where there are pyramids that are older and there's places where pyramids that are younger. Okay. Uh, let's get to the super chat question. Ask Billy about Xeno DNA and the new DNA letters added the other day. She, the ability to recreate giants. I don't, do you understand what he's? Um, yeah, I, I don't know what that is. Well, the Xeno DNA is, is there some, right now our DNA is ACs, T's, ACs, T's, and G's. And there's some new research coming out that I haven't been able to dig into yet about this, these new letters. And the reason why, because I've just been busy. I've been, I'm studying for the bar exam. So I'm getting ready to take my, you know, become an attorney. Oh, and so man. I've been studying for the bar exam. Yeah, another another thing, another notch on my belt, man. Yeah. You know, another I, notch on the belt. I don't think you human. You you can't be human, Billy. You can't. <laughs> you can't be that. All the stuff you got going on, brother. Man. Yeah. yeah, I know. I know. I'm, I'm taking the bar exam uh, probably in a couple of weeks. So I've been studying nonstop. But I did hear about it. But I just haven't looked into it. Yes, it's on my list, my to-do list, because I've just been spending so many countless hours getting ready for this uh, bar exam. Uh, was Bigfoot real and was he a giant? Bigfoot. I think Bigfoot was real. I think that Bigfoot is a remnant of some of these potential Nephilim or these uh, the giants that weren't really the ones that were having a lot of issues or maybe um, uh, they were more animal-like than actual highly intelligent humans. There were two sets of giants if you look at these texts and tablets and stuff. And I think that that could have been a remnant of those people. And eventually they died off. You know, I don't think they're with us anymore. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, let's get to the next question. Ask Billy about the inner earth beings. Now, that's a good question. Uh, there is a lot of accounts of beings uh, that are coming from inside the earth. There's accounts in the North Americas by the Hopis. Um, and so they say that these ant people, when there was a catastrophe, a global catastrophe coming to earth, that these ant people took them down into the earth and saved their lives. Mm. Uh, now the accounts never say that the earth was hollow, but that there are these huge open caverns inside the earth that a lot of people can go in and be there very comfortably, as well as you have a place in Turkey called Deron Kuyu. And so in Deron Kuyu, there is this huge underground city that can hold 30,000 people. And this underground city was built with amazing levels of technology. It's still there. I'm going there, matter of fact, in October. After I get done with my Egypt tour and do my documentary, I'm flying to Turkey to go to Gobekli Tepe. And then I'm flying 30 minutes over to Deron Kuyu. Because no black person has ever documented that place, and I'll be the first one to do ah, it. That's, that's fire. That's going to yeah. be fire, man. Yeah, wow. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. Crazy. Oh. Now, there's 14,000 ventilation shafts built into this underground city that go down to the deepest levels, shafts that are only a few millimeters wide, that go from the deepest levels straight up through solid rock to the surface to let air get to the deepest levels. I mean, these people who constructed this were highly technological there's no evidence of any collapse of the structure underneath the ground and they built it in leveled ways to allow it to to to, to balance all the weight load of all the people and they even had area for livestock and animals down there mm. even they had worship centers and altars down there too and they were this was built to, to, to help them survive some kind of attack coming from above you know the type of attack or who was attacking is never stated i'm hoping that i can get more information about the who and why when i go there uh, in, in, at the end of this year. Mm. Um, is this a question? Uh, no, that's not a question. Somebody, somebody brought up Admiral Hyde. By the way, somebody brought up um, Admiral Bird Operation High Jump. That was another good one to talk about. So there's an opening in Antarctica, about 35, me 35 meters wide opening in the ice. Mm. You can see it from Google Earth. It's clear as day. And there's there's bases down there. This is where the Nazis went. Um, you know, uh, when they were creating this, uh, trying to find the technology to create these Hanabu craft and the Nazi bell, the Die Glock. And so, according to these Nazi people, they had discovered these 
pre-Adamite people living down there in these um this opening. And uh long story short, Admiral Byrd was sent down there with the US Marines and the military to go find out what the hell was going on. And they had these things called Hannibal craft, which came up and started attacking the ships and destroying some of the Navy ships and sent us, sent them, and which is us, right, Americans, back with their tail between their legs. And Admiral Byrd said, we're facing a new kind of enemy, one that could fly from pole to pole. And so that was a long time ago. And so supposedly they had found these people and gotten some technology from them. And now there's a base down there next to this opening. And there's also bases from every major continent on earth, every major country. It's a no war zone. You can't fight there. They're all researching something. Nobody will say exactly what it is. But what's interesting, the only place that's there that's not a country is the Rockefeller Foundation uh, research base. Mm. And it's all labeled from Google. You can see the names of every base and what country they're from. And you got the Rockefeller base right there, too. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. Um, let's get to the next question. We're going to take about uh, three three or four more questions, and we're going to get out of here, family. That's cool with you, Billy? Yeah, 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 because I got I to roll. I got to... Okay, get back to studying, man. Get back to <laughs> this test. All right, too. We're gonna, I, I'm not, I don't like taking tests more than once. I yeah, I hear you. When, when you taking a test, you said when you taking it? Uh, about two weeks. Right at the end of the last day of the month, I'm gonna go and uh and knock out this exam. It's what was the last day? Let me see what's the um see what day it is here. It's on the 31st. Yeah, this last day, Thursday. Mm, okay. Yeah. yeah, man. Um blessings to you with that, my brother. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah, you have the benefit of that. You know, become a family attorney and a business attorney, and uh, and I do my own legal work for my own company and my own family. I build myself, I build my company for my work that I do for the company, and then the company writes off the legal fees and taxes, and I still get paid for the legal work. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, man. Talk, you talk your shit, matrix. man. Talk your shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta know how to play in this matrix, man. You, you do it real smooth, man. <laughs> you do it. <laughs> Oh man, um, does Billy? We're gonna, we're gonna do two more questions, family. Does Billy think the pyramids we see now were once in the oceans and then land might have flip flopped? Man, that's a good question, Antonio. Very Wood. Good. Yes, very good question. Yeah, so basically, the earth sits on our land mass is sitting on top of tectonic plates that kind of connect and then they break apart and slide all around and move on top of this fluid magma that we have, right? And so, we know for a fact that. Certain land masses have shifted and moved around. It's evident because we know that land masses are moving around now in very slow paces, but they're moving. Now, sometimes it, a slip happens and they slip and they move really fast, like Antarctica. Antarctica, we know, was in a warmer part of the Earth, closer to the equator, because we know the animals there were not animals that were built to be in frozen tundra. And now that the now that the ice is melting. They keep finding animals with undigested food in their stomachs, uh, food, fresh food in their teeth, like greenery and things like that. So they know that these animals died pretty rapidly before they can even digest the food they were eating, which gives us evidence that Antarctica had uh, was evidence of a pole shift of the crust of the Earth and that that landmass, the, the, the tectonic plate slipped and the landmass shifted into that position at an extremely rapid pace, shifted probably about 20 to 30 degrees, and that would have created also a global flood because when you have that much land mass moving, you're going to displace water. That water displacement is going to force the water above land and onto land, and it's going to wash over probably a third of the planet. So that was a big geological catastrophe that occurred, which forced that land mass to move like that. And so, yes, some pyramids... Um, are down because of that movement. They sunk as other land masses rose up and shifted. You know, you have a subduction plate or an induction plate. Like, for example, you have uh, the San Andreas fault line in California is on a subduction plate. So even in Hollywood movies, they show that, like, that California, the edge is going to fall off into the ocean. That's not going to happen. A subduction plate is going to cause it to rise up and become a mountain range. So within the next 100 years, you're going to see a mountain range forming in, in, in California. Mm. Uh, you know, so it's uh, pretty interesting stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm going to ask you the last question, Billy. Um, earlier, you mentioned Saturn and the rings being made of ice. I've, mm -hmm. I read somewhere last year that the rings are melting. If that's true, if it's true, what does that mean for the rest of the galaxy? 
That's a good question, man. Boy, you got hey, <laughs> man. This, Yo, black game, game, man. this Black Magic 363, man. Come on, <laughs> hey, come on man. You on top of your game, man. Listen. So, okay, they found this thing called the, the, the scientists in European Space Agency. They're calling it Planet Nine. They don't want to call it Planet X, you know, because, you know, uh, yeah. they don't want to give credit to the Sumerians uh, because they found it first. But this object is out there. It's a brown dwarf star. It was found by the WISE telescope system. Mm -hmm. And this brown dwarf star orbits our sun, they now estimate, every 4,200 years. Now, a brown dwarf is a star that didn't completely turn into a full white star. because Stars are white. They're not actually yellow. That's just an illusion from scattered light. But anyway, that's another, that's another podcast. <laughs> but so it's a brown dwarf. It's a red star. The light is very dim from... From space, so you would have to look at it under two mass infrared mode. If you're looking through uh, a sky telescope, I, I like worldwide telescope. You go to two mass infrared mode, you can actually see it. Now, what's interesting about this brown dwarf, even though it's much smaller than our sun, I mean, way smaller, mm -hmm. it has the same amount of mass gravitationally. Mm -hmm. So it's very dense. Mm -hmm. Now, as it orbits our sun, and we orbit it, our sun orbits it over this galactic dance. It creates gravitational waves. These waves ripple in through the solar system. That creates energy. When you put energy into something, what happens? You shake the atoms more. When mm -hmm. atoms shake more, you get what? Heat. Mm -hmm. It's called friction. Mm -hmm. right? That's why you put stuff in the microwave. What does the microwave do? The microwaves make the atoms shake more. Mm -hmm. And when the atoms shake more, it makes the food hot. That's what's mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. Same exact thing happens to planets. So the reason why they found that there's global warming happening throughout the entire solar system is as this object goes into this weird dance around our sun every 4,200 years, and it's approaching now, mm -hmm. the ripples of this thing come in and create these global warming. They said that the core of Saturn is melting, that they said if we was if that was Earth, we'd be already extinct. Damn. Okay? So this is what's happening. It's a, it's a cycle that happens every 4,200 years, and it's all about gravitational waves mm. creating friction man yo family this was one interesting show family this <laughs> was one interesting show listen um my brother billy gotta go he's yeah. about to um take the bar the brother gotta do that studying yeah. um great role model for all the younger black men out there who are striving to be the best version of themselves. This brother right here is definitely you, displaying the best version of himself. So once again, blessings to you with that. I want you to leave your all your info for the people. You got one of the best networks out with Forbidden, uh, Forbidden Knowledge TV. Tell the people okay. about it and everything else, my brother. Thank you, man. Yeah, so please uh, subscribe. You get a three-day free trial to Forbidden Knowledge TV. You can just go on your Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, iOS App Store, Google Play Store, or the web, Forbidden Knowledge with the number four, Forbidden Knowledge TV, and try it out. Now over 5,000 shows, new documentaries. The Black Knight Satellite documentary is now being released June 5th, finally. It's A-rated, high quality. We're talking about you know Netflix-quality production Excellent. and brand-new TV shows. Um, we have Brother King Simon has his own TV show oh, now. Oh, yeah. It's in post editing right now, so the King Simon uh, show is coming to uh, to the Forbidden Knowledge TV network very very soon as well. Uh, so check it out, and also uh, we are in round two of shares with Forbidden Knowledge. You can find out more on ForbiddenKnowledge.com. Our share price has doubled; it went from a dollar to a dollar fifty. Not because I raised it, because the SEC and the CPA and the accountants and the platform, after doing a new valuation, our valuation went from twenty million dollars to thirty million dollars in ninety days. And the share value went up. So whoever invested in round one, they doubled their money. Already, already doubled. Already the doubled. Damn. Yeah, doubled already. So if you want to buy shares, go to forbiddenknowledge.com. Click on invest. You can find more about how to get on that platform and actually get own shares of Forbidden Knowledge. So you can be an owner and a subscriber. And so you can you can awesome. learn and earn at the same time. Learn and earn. Woo! That's beautiful. Yeah. Yo, um, you got a lot of criticism for doing the Rolls Royce um, yeah. raffle giveaway. And the person that won, King Simon, told me the dude was homeless. The dude was homeless. Listen, this was the most incredible. For me, I still get chills from this thing because, man, this guy, it went to somebody who really needed it, okay? Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. And this kid, I call him a kid because he's, you know, he's young. He's in his late 20s. But mm-hmm. he was married. Mm-hmm. He got divorced. The whole COVID thing happened to him. He lost his job. He got another job. He lost that job. He lost his house. He lost his car. He lost his wife. The guy went homeless three times during this whole process in the last last few years, you know, sleeping in a car and all this crazy stuff. And now the last thing he was doing was he had an air bed. He showed me the air bed uh, sleeping in his uh, a side room at his grandmother's apartment. And, um, and he's a good person. You would never know he was struggling like this from his Instagram account because all he does is go on there and say a positive statement. Believe in yourself. Love people every day. It's all he does. He doesn't make anything. He doesn't show his situation. He doesn't cry or whine or make negative comments or posts about life or the world. Mm-hmm. He just says, you are incredible. You are powerful. You know, all his posts. So I was like, this is incredible. This guy doesn't even give you a glimpse into his re- reality of what yeah. he's going through. Yeah. And he bought a ticket with his last $50. He said he usually never gambles on anything. But he said, you know what? Something just told him to just buy this ticket. Mm-hmm. He, pay- he spent $50 on the ticket. And uh, he he forgot about it. He just released it. I released it and just let it go. He never thought about it again. So when he got the call from us, he didn't know what was going on. He was <laughs> completely oblivious. And he had won the Rolls Royce. And so I, the whole recording of the conversation is on my account. And I said to him, you know, can you would you like to take delivery of the car? Or would you like me to sell it and send you the money? He says, send me the money. He's like, when can you? How fast can you get me this money? <laughs> And the car was a 2013 Rolls Royce Ghost. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so, and it had one, I didn't even know about this, it had one Carfax. It had a, 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 a hit in the front passenger side. It was repaired so good. I didn't know. And when I bought it, I never checked the Carfax. I just ordered it online and bought it. Mm-hmm. And plus it had 56,000 miles. Because remember, I used to rent that car out as a luxury exotic rental. So it was mm-hmm. it had a lot of miles. So mm-hmm. that drove the value down. But after taxes and everything, he walked away with 88000 dollars mm. okay and we have the bank wire receipts we have everything we have the title signing over we have the car dealer and now the car is available it's on auto trader if you type in if you go oh. to auto trader and type in 2013 rolls royce mm-hmm. ghost it pops up my car that car he that he won that new that guy who bought it from me for eighty eight thousand, uh cut me to check and everything it's it's on his uh his car his exotic car website right now for sale He's got it for sale for one hundred and thirty thousand, so he's gonna make his little, uh, you know, twenty thirty thousand uh, dollars profit there. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, but he's happy. It worked out well, and he's blessed. And now I'm his mentor. I'm mentoring him now. Oh, excellent! That's an excellent story, man. That's an yeah. amazing story. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I'm mentoring him now. So I'm showing he got his. He he moved from California. I told him you got to get out of California first of all. If you want to turn this money into something, get you got to get out of California. You can't be broke and live in California because you got to pay state taxes. You got all these extra fees. Mm-hmm. And all this stuff you got to get. So he moved to Austin, Texas. So Austin Nelson moved to Austin. He's in Austin mm-hmm. now, mm-hmm. and uh, he got an apartment, and he got a new car, uh, just a cheap mm-hmm. little car, you know, decent mm-hmm. car, but jumped in cheap. And now I'm mentoring him, and I'm going to help him continue to build and grow that money and turn that money into millions of dollars. Man, excellent, man, excellent. Y'all, y'all see, y'all like, man, listen, the brother kept a positive mindset throughout all of it. Yeah. He stayed on that vibration. And he was able to manifest that vibration. So, yeah, yeah, man, family, stay on a high vibration this year, 2022. We on a, you know, we on a high vibrational ish. So Mm -hmm. just vibe high, family. Uh, I appreciate y'all for being in here. What a wonderful show, Billy. Thanks for coming back on again. You You did an amazing job tonight, family. This is Brother Rich, Billy Carson. We getting out of here. We'll see you next time, family. Peace. Peace. All right.